Activists Destroying Opportunity. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. I want to have a look at this article from the National Indigenous Times because I thought, well, this paints a really interesting picture. So, uh, Beetaloo traditional owners reveal frustration at anti-fracking activists interfering on country. So you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't advocate for traditional owners having control and say over the land that they're from and then being angry when they want to kind of use the natural resources on that land to maybe improve opportunities for their people. You know, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of what a sane person wants, particularly when you're older. Like, you know, Jungili Elder, Pompey Raymond reflects on the Northern Territory's oil and gas industry. He sees careers for young people, education, community infrastructure, and a pathway to protect his country. Okay? So he's thinking like a normal person. Particularly when you're older, you want to give back. But the, the activists, they're probably busting from all over the country, the protest stuff. Oh. So a senior ceremony man born... On Bintalu Station, Mr. Raymond believes the debate around industry is often hijacked by those who should not speak for the region. My father been learning me all that country and all that Bintalu Station, all them ceremony things, he said. Me and my daughter and my sons, we can talk that Bintalu. Bintalu Station, we got all them areas, so we can talk for that story, those people and all that country. Fracking is a polarizing issue among the wider indigenous population in the top end. Back on Waranka country, Mr. Raymond said the voices who could rightfully speak for country were clear in their support. In a rare series of interviews, remote community leaders such as Mr. Raymond have spoken up, uh, up to dispel perceptions. The top end industry community was united against industrial development. It's funny that, isn't it? It's funny that the mainstream narrative that we're we're fed in the media. Hmm. I wonder why that is. It's probably, he's probably probably a troublemaker. They don't like him. You know, he's he's thinking of the future of of his uh, children and children's children. How can we have that? The problem is, there's a whole uh, a whole industry built on keeping people dependent on the state. Debate is centered on the. Uh, Bentalu Basin, which has enough shale gas stored to power Australia for an estimated 300 years. Yeah, but I mean, the problem is hippie greens don't want us to use any of that energy, guys. They don't want Australia to have cheap, uh, clean and efficient energy. No, 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 no. An attractive pr- uh, proposition given the East Coast's current power woes. Australian Petroleum produce, uh, Production and Exploration Associate Director... Cassandra Schmidt in May boasted industrialising the basin could generate $1 billion in revenue for the Territory over the next two decades, create thousands of jobs, and completely transform the nearest major town, Catherine. Yes, that's what you want. You want an energy rush there because everyone in that community will get a benefit. Everyone will. Even, even just the infrastructure that the community has access to will, will improve. Those rallying against companies such as Santos and Origin Energy have mounted a high-profile media blitz off the back of Tiwi Islanders taking the federal offshore oil and gas regulator to court and anti-fracking group uh, Naradalinji Native Title Aboriginal Corporation's outspoken criticism of the practice. Their arguments are largely environmental and cultural, focusing on carbon emissions, groundwater health, wastewater disposal, and risk to sacred sites. But Majabara Jingili man, Jeremy Jackson, who lives in Marlinja, on the southwest corner of the Falcon Origin uh, Batlu Basin joint venture, said working with industry was the best way to protect country and improve lives under current native title title laws. That's what you want to do. You want to you've got these people living in literally the middle of nowhere surrounded by all these valuable resources that they've got no capacity to utilize, but they can work with these companies to make a, leave a legacy. 
Otherwise, it's going to be the same shit in another 20 years. People will be living there exactly the same in 20 years' time. And they'll be complaining about bridging the gap and how we need to throw more money at bloody government programs that do bugger all. I I remember this back at university. It was the same thing we were talking about then. Mr. Jackson speaks for his uncle, Terry Jackson, a senior Mangaya for the um, Barajanga group in the Bentaloo region. I know I'm butchering these names, forgive me. Native title, you say no. The government will actually go around to the back door and sa- you say no. And you get all this mining mob coming in. We say yes, and then we get the benefit out of it. And also we look after our country too as well, our sacred sites. We want to work together with Northern Land Council and this mining company to protect our country and our sacred sites. Mr. Jackson said he was happy with the level of consultation undertaken by Origin and the NLC on the project. He said Origin had taken its community license to operate seriously, funding a football oval in Elliott, providing jobs for remote residents, and ensuring traditional owners had a first-hand look into the operations. Mr. Jackson's comments were backed by fellow... Madbar, Madbara Jingili man, Benjamin Ulmari, who said Origin was giving jobs to anyone willing to work in Elliot and Marlinja communities. This is good news. Is, isn't this what we want? People want work. I don't care whatever race you are, wherever you're from, I, particularly for men, you need to work. You need to work. My position is a career position. I can get trained up and I can move to elsewhere and just get a job like that. Mr. Ulmari said, oh, bloody oath you can. If you're working with one of the big mining companies, you know, you definitely. Helping give us a better future for our kids. Mm, That sounds really familiar. It seems to be something that many people consider. You know, my father moving from Germany here, that was a big part of it. We want better opportunity, better education, better jobs for our people. And we'll decide that, not others. Origin has laid out plans to drill two more wells this year between Dali Waters and Bura Lula, about 150 kilometers northeast of Elliott. Several smaller players operating in the regions, including Empire Energy and Tambaran Resources, are racing towards production too. The former telling a conference last month it hoped to be generating cash flow in 2024. The jobs are important, living 250 kilometres north of Tennant Creek and about 750 kilometres from Darwin, career prospects that have been thin for residents of Elliott and Marlinja. Yeah, well, bloody oath, you you live in so remote. I mean, this could open doors. You work for these companies on these mines, it has opportunities. But even more important than jobs is protection of the sacred sites and countries, something those supposed supporting fracking have consistently been accused of failing on. It's an unfair assertion, Mr. Jackson said. Origin are drilling and all that stuff, and we see what they're doing on our country, Mr. Jackson's father, Uncle Terry's country, he said. We did ask a lot of questions about the water, and they showed us. We asked them what they put underneath the fracking stuff, and they showed us a sample, and it was really good. That willingness from Origin to show traditional owners what they're doing has built a trust in the company, and a strong belief fracking can be can be done safely. The Northern Territory Land Council has also been active in its advisory role, providing technical expert, experts outside of the oil and gas companies. For its part, the Territory Government has promised to hold industry to high standards, describing risks posed by fracking as negligible. Speaking after approving four new origin wells in the basin in June and as activists cried foul over... Tambor and resources move onto a cattle station without pastoralist consent. NT Environmental Minister Laurie Moss said stringent environmental standards would be adhered to. Proponents are required to have stringent environmental management plans approved, and the Department of Environment, Parks and Water Security, as environmental regulators, ensures compliance with EMPs, she told the National Indigenous Times. Regarding Tambaran, There is a land access agreement in place as determined by NT civil and administrative tribunals, which meets the minimum provisions. Ms. Moss said she was comfortable with the level of traditional owner consultation undertaken by companies seeking to unlock the Batulu Basin's industrial potential. So, well, let's, let's have a bit of a talk about this one. I 
I think this is great. I think this is what you want to happen. You want people in these remote communities to have opportunities. You want to create jobs. You want private business to go in there to create these opportunities. You want people to be independent and free of the state, of the government, of the, of the bloody government programs or even government jobs. This is fantastic and it should be encouraged and celebrated. Yet there'll be bloody lefties, loonies, environmentalists, bitching and moaning and destroying opportunities because they probably think they know better. What do you reckon, guys? This is a, this is a good news article. We'll see if anyone watches it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your, your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband, or buy our Pocket Squares and other merch. If you need an architect, give us a call. We've done a lot of remote mining work. <laughs> if you're at uh, Origin or uh, one of the other miners, otherwise, take care, guys. Have a great day. And this is encouraging. I like these type of stories. See, not all the news is about businesses going under or new taxes, you know, or spruiking scams. There's some good news. Jobs are being created. Thank mm-hmm. you.